Where are the alien civilizations? Fermi Paradox explains. The Fermi Paradox, created by the famous theoretical physicist Enrico Fermi, is a paradox that asks the question, where are all the alien civilizations? With billions of years in our universe and countless planets similar to Earth, it seems almost inevitable that intelligent life would have evolved on another planet. Yet, we haven't found any evidence of such civilizations. This mystery, this silence from the cosmos, is what the Fermi Paradox addresses. But wait, there's more to this paradox than we're yet to unravel. So stay with us to dive deeper into potential answers and theories. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content about our mysterious universe. Have you ever wondered if we're alone in the universe? With billions of stars and planets in our galaxy, Earth seems unlikely to be the only place where life exists. So where are all the alien civilizations? Those passionately engaged in extraterrestrial exploration and research have a growing consensus that humanity might not be prepared for an encounter with alien civilizations. This realization crystallizes when we step away from fantastical notions and dive headfirst into a scientific approach to the issue. Pursuing other intelligent life forms is not only potentially futile, but could also metaphorically unlock a portal we're unprepared to cross. What secrets does the cosmos silence hide? And why do we dedicate such immense effort to establish contact with extraterrestrial entities, knowing that this aim may remain unfulfilled? The Fermi Paradox is a culmination of such questions, and attempts to make sense of our lack of evidence for other intelligent life in the universe. Imagine a society of aliens similar to us, with the same level of technology. Their spaceships zoom through the universe at the same speed as ours. Given this, such a society shouldn't take more than a billion years to spread across a galaxy the same size as ours. It's shocking how swiftly any civilization of this kind would have populated the galaxy. But if that's true, why don't we see a bustling galaxy teeming with life? To understand this, we need to consider the Kardashev scale. Most scientists today use the Kardashev scale to measure how likely it is for a life form to colonize space and potentially come into contact with others. This scale provides a possible explanation as to why we don't see a space filled with civilizations. Kardashev suggested measuring a civilization's technological progress by examining how well it uses its energy resources. For instance, a Type 1 civilization, according to this scale, can use all the energy it can capture from its planet and its parent star. Such a civilization would likely be ready to travel between planets and eventually colonize their whole solar system. In truth, we're yet to climb from the zero level of the Kardashev scale, managing to tap into only 73% of our planet's energy potential and harnessing less than 0.1% of the energy from our sun. A Type II civilization, on the other hand, would have mastered the ability to capture not only the energy of their home planet, but also that of their entire star system, or be on the verge of achieving this feat. Scientists often search for signs of such advanced societies through the theoretical concept of a Dyson Sphere. This artificial structure would enable a civilization to exploit all the energy emanating from its star. Therefore, having the capacity for interstellar travel, these Type II civilizations would have began colonizing their galaxy and potentially extending their reach beyond it, thereby continually expanding their energy capabilities. Further up the scale, a Type III civilization would have harnessed the energy from their star system and neighboring systems, controlling the energy of their entire galaxy or possibly the entire universe. Such civilizations would likely have the ability to not only harness energy, but also to reshape entire worlds. However, this poses a challenge in communicating with even a Type I civilization. Our current capacity for transmitting and receiving signals is limited, with our planetary energy activities like radio signals, lasers, and electrical activities detectable only up to a distance of a mere four light years. Thus, our cosmic noise is barely audible and can only reach those in our immediate vicinity who are at a similar level of development. A Type II civilization far more advanced than ours would command such technological prowess that they could detect us from staggering distances. 
Moreover, they could ensure their existence remains undetected due to the sheer distances involved, or perhaps a deliberate intention to stay unnoticed. Despite spending six decades transmitting various signals and relentlessly scanning the skies for signs of artificial life, we remain unheard of and have found nothing. This profound silence was first underscored by the legendary physicist Enrico Fermi. During a casual conversation, Fermi asked his colleagues, where are all the aliens and why haven't they contacted us? From a vantage point, the answer is quite straightforward. Considering the level of our civilization's development, why would they? The infrastructure required for interstellar travel is available only to civilizations that have reached at least a Type II status. From their perspective, we might simply not be worth the effort. Would any rational human attempt to communicate with ants? Can ants even comprehend an attempt at communication? In the grand context of cosmic civilizations, we might just be akin to advanced ants, with mastery over an entire planet, but ineffective utilization of its potential. Similar civilizations, like ours that have yet to reach Type 1, are likely confined to their respective planets and star systems. It would be unrealistic to anticipate visitors from such regions. It's conceivable that they, like us, are wrestling with worldly challenges, battling hunger, vying for resources, and engaging in territorial disputes. Therefore, it seems Type 1 civilizations would have their plates full of more immediate concerns. But could there be an outlier? a civilization that has overcome these issues and leaped into space? Scientific data suggests we might have a surprisingly large number of cosmic neighbors. We can only speculate about the number of potentially habitable planets when we gaze up into the cloudless sky. We observe only 1% of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. But even if just 1% of these worlds are inhabited and teeming with sentient life, that would suggest the existence of nearly 100,000 intelligent civilizations in our galaxy alone. Yet they all remain hauntingly silent. Now, science has over a hundred theories to explain this deafening silence, but let's navigate through some of the most fascinating ones. First up, what if advanced civilizations simply don't exist? You heard it right. The Great Filter Theory suggests that life hits a wall at a particular stage of development, a difficult hurdle to overcome. It could be anything from rogue AI wiping out life forms to cataclysmic events. The scary part, if this theory holds, we humans are stuck with three possible futures. Scenario one, we're special. We've surpassed this great filter with most civilizations unable to break through it. That's why no one's been texting us back. Scenario two, we're early birds. Life as we know it only recently became possible and we're the cosmic pioneers. So we're the ones at this advanced stage Still no one to get that call from. Scenario 3, and a bit grim, we're normal. Life keeps evolving until it hits a roadblock, a stage where we currently are. If this is the case, the Great Filter is still ahead of us. Now there's another school of thought. Advanced civilizations exist, and we haven't heard from them for a good reason. We're merely looking for signals within a 100 light year radius, which is just 0.1% of our galaxy. Think about it. Some exciting theories rooted in this idea suggest that our galaxy might have been colonized already. But to those colonizers, we are in a desolate, uninteresting part of the galaxy. Or maybe there are signals around us, but we're just too primitive to understand them. There's even a theory that we could live in a cosmic zoo, as observed by advanced civilizations like animals in a wildlife reserve. Despite all these theories, we're still in the dark. But that doesn't mean we've stopped trying. SETI and METI, two projects aimed at finding extraterrestrial life, have been trying to crack this for decades using the Drake Equation. The equation reveals that our galaxy should have anywhere from 8 to 2,900 intelligent civilizations. The SETI project started in 1984, scanning around us for any artificial radio signals, but came up empty. However, with the help of the European space telescope Gaia, SETI can now analyze each star system in detail. As for METI, they're busy sending greetings to distant stars. As we wait for a response, remember, some replies might take 3,600 years to reach us. So while the silence is frustrating, it doesn't mean there's nobody out there. We could just be a few centuries away from that long-awaited hello. Last but not least, the role of the Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence Mission cannot be understated. 
given its pivotal function in attempting to intercept extraterrestrial communication and dispatch our salutations to far-off celestial bodies. They've already initiated at least eight communication attempts, including the renowned Golden Records housed on the Voyager probes, alongside the Nogalus ones in the Pioneer spacecraft. The remaining six attempts were conveyed through radio signals aimed at specific stars, one of which includes Gliese 581, a solar-type star nearby. Approximately 40 radio sessions have been conducted in total, and while we may not anticipate an immediate response, it's plausible that our future generations could receive a reply. In conclusion, our in-depth analysis suggests that the cosmic silence we're experiencing is not an anomaly, but likely the norm. It's feasible that our evolution hasn't yet reached a level capable of comprehending or interacting with extraterrestrial intelligence. Alternatively, the cosmos may not yet be primed for such an encounter. The lingering question is, which scenario is the most probable? Are we a singular species? Or has the cosmos been colonized by highly advanced civilizations for quite some time? It appears we're on the precipice of unlocking these age-old mysteries. Yet one has to wonder, are we truly prepared for this imminent contact? So let's keep searching, listening, and reaching out to the stars in hopes of one day receiving that long-awaited hello. Until then, please stay connected with us by subscribing to our channels and sharing the latest developments in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence.